I'm going to do a series of lecture videos for Chapter 8, Confidence Intervals, okay? All right, the entire chapter, whether it's proportions, whether it's mean, the entire chapter revolves around one simple basic concept. What is the population mean? Or what is the range of possibilities for the population mean? I'm going to start out with a simple example. Uh, and I use that as a, a launching pad for this chapter. Let's pretend I want to know what the population mean for the speed limits of cars going down the street, okay? Well, unless you were born, there, unless, you were, unless you were there when the street was born, um, or uh, it's impossible to be able to clock every single car that has gone down the street. Just say I'm, it's, you know, I'm, I'm worried about the... Uh, somebody getting hit by a car, and I uh, want to maybe change the uh, change the rules. Maybe I want to uh, go to con uh, go to our my, my city government and say, hey, we should change the speed limits for whatever reason. You want to know the population mean of the cars coming down the street. Well, you'll never know the true population mean, never ever. However, we could take a sample mean, and then distinguish what is the range of possibilities for the population mean. Okay, so. Let's just say that I did um, I did 50 cars, okay? And of the 50 cars, the sample mean, remember this is the symbol for a sample mean, okay? Is, say it was uh, 35 miles an hour, all right? Then there's what we call the margin of error. Now, I'll, I'll get into more specifics, but I'm, I'm trying to give you a, a broad overview, general overview of what this chapter is about. Let's just say the margin of error, because I'll never know the exact speed limit of the population mean, but I'm going to try to estimate it. Say the margin of error is 3, okay? So if the margin of error is 3, I take my sample mean, and I add my margin of error 3, which is 35, add margin of error 3 to get 38 for my upper confidence interval and subtract the margin of error 3 to get 32. So my confidence interval then, and just say I'm 95% confidence interval, and we'll talk about specifics later, but I want to get you, you have to know this overall concept that you'll never get this chapter, okay? So I could say with 95% confidence that the population mean is between 35 and 38 because my sample mean was 35, I calculated my margin of error to be three, so my confidence interval for the population mean, and I'll never, and never, ever, ever know exactly what it is, but I'm 95% confident that it's between 32 and 38. The 95% confidence does not have anything to do with probability. Okay, it is a confidence level, and it is, so I'm not. It's not 95% chance that a car is going to be between 32 and 38. Absolutely not true. I'm 95% confident that that population mean, don't know what it is, but it's 95% sure that it's between 32 and 38, okay? The smaller the margin of error, the better. So let's just say I came back with the study and I go to my mayor and I say, I believe the speed limit of that street is between 2 and 88, okay? Oh, boy. What the heck? So that would mean the... Um, you know, that, that, that's not even, what could I do with that information? Is it 86? Is it 3? Is it 20? That is a horrible study. I would get fired if I'm doing that statistical analysis because I can't do anything with that data. If I said the <clears throat> confidence interval, I, I believe it's between 38 and 40. See how small that margin of error is? See how small that, that, that confidence interval is? That's very good data, okay? Is it 38? Is it 39? Is it 40? I don't know, but that's pretty darn good close to estimating what that population mean is. So this would mean that my X bar is 39, my sample mean is 39, and my margin of error is one, which is very, very good. That's a very, very good study, okay? The other one had a margin of error of 40 something. You know, that's, that's no good at all. This is a tight confidence window or a narrow confidence window. Narrow confidence windows are better than wide confidence intervals. Wide confidence interval would be that one to would be like you know two to 88 that's a wide confidence interval that is not as good as the narrow interval of what we just did okay so the smaller the margin of error 
the more narrow the confidence interval, the bigger the margin of error, the wider the confidence interval. So smaller, more narrow is better. Wider, um, not as good, okay? <clears throat> All right, margin of error bigger, confidence interval wider, not as good, okay? The one thing we could do if we want to increase a decrease our margin of error, which in turn will give us a more narrow confidence interval, is add more samples, okay? The more, just say I did two cars. Well, how am I going to tell what the population mean is if I only sample two cars, okay? When you calculate again, we'll get into specifics a little later. We'll calculate the margin of error. It's going to be huge because it's two cars. The, the, the sample size is part of the calculation in your margin of error, Okay. If I only do two samples, I'm going to get a really uh, high margin of error and a really wide confidence, a really wide confidence interval, right? If I did 500, if I did 500 samples, that's awesome. And now I'm getting more and more closer to what I think. The more samples I do, the more I know I, about the, the population, even though I'll never know for sure. So the better, if I want to, if I want to remain everything else the same, confidence level, and and all that, then what I do is uh, I take more samples. The more samples I do, everything else being equal, the, the more narrow the confidence interval is going to be and the smaller the margin of error, okay? If now we'll get into some conceptual problems. Hopefully you'll be able to nail these. Um, with this. And if I, I say 95% confidence interval, you always be given the confidence level, in this case, 95% confidence in the problem. You'll never have to, like, find out what that is. That's always going to be given in a problem, Okay. 95% confidence interval for the population mean of age of community college students they think was between 23 and 29. If I randomly select a college student, there's a 95% chance that the student is between 23 and 29 years old. That is false, okay? That is false. All that The true statement would be I'm 95% confident that the mean age of community college students was between 23 and 29. That's how I would interpret that. It has nothing to do with probability, nothing to do with chance. It's all about how confident am I in my confidence interval. I'm 95% confident that that population mean of age is between 23 and 29, okay? So here we go. This is a true statement. If I did a million, so in other words, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of confidence intervals for a mean were computed and 95% was my confidence interval, then of 95% of these confidence intervals would contain the population mean. In other words, if it was like, you know, between 37 and 42 for speed limits, 95% of the time when I computed these intervals, it would be true. The population mean would be between those two numbers. 5% of the time, it would not be, okay? 5% of the time, it would not be. So in other words, in that example I did, the speed limits between, say, 38 and, I don't remember the numbers, it's 38 and 44, if I'm 95% sure that the population mean is between those two numbers, that means there's about a 5% chance that I'm wrong, okay? There's about a 5% chance that I'm wrong, all right? Be careful on this one. Everything looks perfect except this word right here. Remember, we are trying to analyze the population mean. We know the sample mean. 100% of the time, we know exactly what that sample mean is. We never have to guess at the sample mean. We take the number of samples, and let's say we do speed limits. We, if we did 50 cars, we'd add up those 50 cars, divide uh, speeds, divide by 50, and we get a definitive sample mean. We never have to guess at a sample mean. We use, However, we use that sample mean with the margin of error to come up with a confidence interval. Okay, So 95% of them would have a, that would be a population mean, not a sample Again, we know what the sample mean is always. However, we're using the sample mean to arrive at our confidence interval for the population mean, which we'll never know exactly what that is. Same thing. We know what the sample mean was for these 55 Lake Tahoe residents, okay? We can be 95% confident that these 55 Tahoe residents went to the beach between 3.1 and 7.2. No, that's we're trying to figure out what that population mean is, okay? We know what the sample mean is. We don't have to put any kind of interval for the sample mean. We use the sample mean to try to arrive at the confidence interval for the population mean, which we because we don't know because we weren't sitting on that beach when it was um, uh, clocking the you know counting these things from the day the beach was uh, 
was was invented. And again, I just want to reiterate, anytime you see 95% chance, you could just false right away. This has nothing to do with the chance of something, okay? 95% confident that it's between these two and this two. Nothing to do with 95% chance. Uh, we're not in probability anymore. Okay, just as in chapter seven, if the sample size is uh, 30 or more, we do not need to assume that the distribution is normal, okay? So this answer is true. If the, this is 30, this is more than 80, we will need to assume that the distribution is approximately normal. No, we don't need to assume it because if it's more than 80, then no assumption is necessary. It's normalized 30 or beyond. So we do not need to assume it's, it's normal past 30. We know it is. Okay. When you're the first section of problems, when you're calculating confidence intervals for the mean, use this spreadsheet, okay? When you're, you, you're doing this sections for proportions, you use this spreadsheet, point confidence, okay? And when you're doing this section for sample size, use this spreadsheet, okay? So there's three different spreadsheets, three different uh, sections of problems once you get past this, and then uh, one spreadsheet for each concept, okay, for each set of uh, homework problems. Okay, this one jumps the gun a little bit. This is still in the first section of concepts, okay? And <clears throat> so they're asking you to find the margin of error, okay? The pop, when the, when, okay, first of all, this, it, it doesn't matter what the sample size is, if you're all, you're looking, interested in the margin of error. If you're interested in the actual um, confidence interval, then obviously you have to know the sample size, or, okay? But just to find the margin of error, you do not need to know the, the mean, the sample mean, okay? All right? Now, here's the tricky part. Well, not really, but, you know, all right. If the population standard deviation is known, in this case it is, 2,400. When you enter the confidence level, okay, I hit that there. Let me stretch this out a little bit so we can see everything, okay? If I know the population standard deviation, and I know this is goofy, I didn't make this stuff up, I just teach it, you know, somebody else made all this up, I just have to teach it, okay? If the population standard deviation is known, then you enter the confidence level in the Z category and you look for your answers over here in the Z column. Most of the time, in most of your homework problems, you don't, you won't know or won't say what this population standard deviation, it'll tell you I got a sample mean of this and I got a sample standard deviation of that, and you'd enter your, your confidence level here. But in this case, they do, you do know the population standard deviation, and all you're looking for is the margin of error, okay? So you would put sample size and a sample size, remember, so and put sample size 36 here. You don't need to put mean because they're not asking you for the interval. All you're doing is asking for the margin of error. Margin of error calculation is right here for a T. We'll show up right here for a Z. In this case, we're going to do Z. Standard deviation, 2,400. And the Z confidence level, because we do know this population standard deviation is 0.95. Okay? So there's your... Margin of error right here, 784, plus or minus 784. Remember, margin of error, you add, you know, it's plus or minus. The margin of error is 784. I don't know why they put plus or minus in there. But remember, if you were actually doing a confidence interval, you would take your sample mean, add 784, subtract 784. That's probably why they put that in there. Now, for this one, they give you the confidence interval, and they're asking you to find the margin of error, okay? All right, uh, and oh, they could also ask you to find the sample uh, proportion, even though we didn't, uh, they didn't ask, we'll do that too. Okay, remember, the entire confidence interval is double the margin of error, right? The entire confidence interval is double the margin of error because you got the, proper, proper, the, the sample proportion, okay? You got a sample proportion, and you add the margin of error and subtract the margin of error to get your um, confidence interval. So the entire width of this confidence interval is double the margin of error. So if I take the difference, 0.23 minus 0.13, and get 0.10, and divide it by 2, I'd get the margin of error, okay? So the margin of error is 0.0.